All right, welcome to the screencast for the topic nine exercises. So starting with number one, you're supposed to assign oxidation numbers to the elements. So NH4, um, hydrogen's gonna have the priority here. It's gonna be plus one. Overall, it's a plus one. So if I've got plus four for my hydrogen, that means I need a minus three for my nitrogen to balance this. The second one, copper chloride, uh, copper's a transition metal, so chlorine gets preference at minus one. That gives us total minus two charge, so copper's going to have to be plus two in this clay case. With H2O, oxygen has the preference with minus two, which leaves uh, hydrogen, I'm in a little trouble here, hydrogen with a plus one charge. SO2, this is shown with uh, no charge on it, so Oxygen is going to have the preference or priority at minus 2 for total minus 4, leaving sulfur with a plus 4. Fe2O3, again, oxygen has priority, so I've got a total minus 6 charge. That means my two iron will each have to be a plus 3. Oxygen has priority with a minus 2 charge. It's a total minus ch 6 charge, but a minus 1 on the ion, so that would leave my nitrogen with a plus 5 charge. MnO2, oxygen's at a minus 2 or minus 4 overall, making Mn plus 4. PO4, 3 minus, the oxygen are each minus 2 for total minus 8. Uh, with the minus 3 charge overall, that's going to leave phosphorus at a plus 5. <clears throat> Add that K2Cr207, potassium has priority at plus 1, then oxygen at minus 2. This leaves a plus 12 charge for the two chromium to take care of, or each chromium would have to be plus 6. And then the last one I tucked up at the top here, MnO4 minus, my oxygen are going to be minus 2 for a total minus 8. So my manganese will have to be a plus 7 to balance that out. In question number two, you were asked to decide which species is oxidized and which is reduced. So the first thing is you have to find out which of the um, different elements had a change in oxidation number from left to right. And in A, there only was tin and iron, so they both had a change in oxidation number. I can see that tin's oxidation number went up. That means it's losing electrons and it's being oxidized, while iron has a decrease or a reduction in its oxidation number, so it's being reduced. The second one, chlorine goes from elemental to ionic, so to an ion. So that means it's gaining electrons or being reduced, whereas bromine's going the opposite direction and being oxidized. C, Fe plus two to Fe plus three, that's a loss or oxidation, whereas chlorine's gaining electrons to become an ion or is reduced. D, oxygen's going from being an ion or being in a compound to being elemental. So it's um, losing electrons and being oxidized. That's where the name came from. Whereas fluorine is gaining those electrons and being reduced. And then I didn't plan very well. So E is up here at the top. Iodine is becoming an ion and being reduced. Well, sulfur is giving up two more electrons and being oxidized. Okay, for 3A and 3B, I've filled in the oxidation numbers for the ones that don't have a charge. So I'm starting with Ca with no charge is becoming Ca2+. plus. So that means two electrons have been removed. That's one half reaction. And then I've got 2H+. Plus. It's becoming H2. So that means two electrons have been gained. My second one, the 2Fe2+, plus. can't read my own writing here. Well, let me try that again. My board's not quite aligned. 2Fe2+, plus is becoming 2Fe3+, plus. so that means I need two electrons on the more negative side here, whereas the Cl2 is going to gain two electrons to become 2Cl- ion. And I'm going to pause while I put up the half or the equations for C and D. So looking at 3C, then I have SN2 plus becoming SN4 plus. So the more positive side here needs two electrons. Sorry about that squiggle in my board. And then the 2Fe2 
3 plus is going to become 2Fe2 two plus, and that means two electrons have been gained by the iron. And finally, DCl2, elemental, it has no oxidation number, it becomes 2Cl minus, so that means this is the more positive side and is gaining two electrons, whereas the 2Br minus ion is becoming elemental bromine, 2Br minus ion is becoming elemental bromine and losing the two electrons. Okay, on number four, you're asked to put the whole thing together, right? Balanced equations for the following reactions in acidic solutions. So you really have to follow the process that I gave you in the packet. And so I started out, I've done the first couple steps here for A, and I'm going to pause and do these first steps for each of these just in the interest of time. But you notice that I figured out that zinc is going from an oxidation number of 0 to plus 2, whereas sulfur is going from plus 6 to plus 4. So I've got my half reactions. And I can see that each half reaction is involving two electrons. So I can go ahead and go to the add step here where I have two electrons plus S6 plus, And I can actually go ahead and uh, put my oxygen back in here, write my ion, SO4, 2 minus. And then I've got the Zn. And then on the other side, I've got Zn2 plus. I've got another two electrons, and I've got just the one SO2 group. And so my two electrons are going to cancel out. And at this point, because it's in an acidic solution, I have to look and see which side needs water or needs oxygen. And it's this side that could use some water. So I'm going to add in two waters to make up for the two missing oxygen. And because of that, then this side is going to need four hydrogen. So my balanced equation would be four hydrogen ions plus SO4 two minus plus Zn yields Zn two plus ion plus SO2 plus two H2O. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this and get my half reaction set up for part B. Okay, so hopefully you didn't have trouble coming up with the two half reactions. I balance the iodine by putting a two in front of the ion on the left side and that means two electrons on the left. So again, I'm adding equal number of electrons, so I don't need to increase either equation. So when I rewrite this, I have 2i minus plus s plus 6, 2 electrons yields i2 plus 2 electrons and s plus 4. And I actually could go ahead and add my oxygen back in here. And I'll do the same here. So of s6, I'll go ahead and write HSO4. And my two electrons are going to cancel out. And again, if I look, it's my oxygen that's not balanced. I have four on the left and only two on the right. That means I might have to add two water over here. And because I added two water, I'm not going to have enough hydrogen on this side. I've got four on the left. So I will need to add three hydrogen ions to the left side. And I now have a balanced equation. And just a quick thing to point out, the five examples they gave you in number four, this is pretty typical of what IB will expect you to be able to do as far as balancing a, a redox equation. They'll Most likely it'll be in an acidic solution. They won't give you any words in a basic solution, although that's a possibility we don't have to deal with. And then um, they tend to give you just the net ionic equation. There really isn't anything for spectator ions here. They could have you know, used Ki and... KSO2, but they kind of take it easy on you in that respect. So I'll go ahead and set up problem C here. Okay, in letter C for the first time, I have to multiply one of my equations to balance out the electrons gained and lost or transferred here. So now when I add up my equations, I've got NO3 minus, I've got the eight electrons, the zinc has now become four zinc, on the other side, I've got NH4 plus four zinc ions and eight electrons. So again, canceling out my electrons because I've got them balanced. Now when I look, I need oxygen on the right. So I'm going to add three waters to the right. And I also have some H4 here. So I've got a total of 10 hydrogen on the other side that I need to account for. So I'm going to add 10 hydrogen ion to the left side, and I then have a balanced equation. 
Okay, so in this one, I have to multiply my second equation by 5 to have 10 electrons being gained and lost. So when I rewrite the equation, I've got I2 plus 5 OCl minus plus the 10 electrons. On the right, I have 2IO3 plus 10 electrons and the 5Cl minus. So across half my electrons, first thing I look for is oxygen. I've got five oxygen on the left, and I've got six oxygen on the right. That means I still need one H2O on the left. That gives me two hydrogen on the left. I have no hydrogen on the right, so I'm going to have to add 2H plus onto the right. And for letter E, this is one case where you have to multiply both equations to get the electrons to cancel, come up with the least common multiple of 10. So when I rewrite this, I've got 2MnO4 minus, and I guess I could have written it originally just the Mn and left the oxygen off. And then I've got 10 electrons total. And from the bottom, I've got 5 H2SO4, or H2SO3, I'm sorry. And that's going to yield 2Mn plus, 2 plus, plus I've got the 5SO4. Is it just SO4 on the other side? Yes, it is. 5SO4, 2 minus, and then the 10 electrons it carries down. So my 10 electrons cancel out. And as I look here, I've got... Um, so I'm going to take this O4 off up here because that doesn't make sense. It's Mn plus 7. And so as I look here, I've got 8 plus 15. I've got 23 oxygen on the left side. And on the right, I only have 20. So I'm going to add 3H2O to the right side. And now this is an unusual equation because when I look at my hydrogen, I have 10 hydrogen on the left but I only have six on the right, so I'm also gonna add, add the hydrogen to the same side as the water. And yes, that is legal to do. It's all about balancing. So uh, that's what my equation tells me needs to be done. So that's what you do. Okay, so I've written in the half reactions for each of these, and you're identifying the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So when I look at this, hydrogen is being oxidized. That makes it a reducing agent. Chlorine's being reduced, that makes it an oxidizing agent. On B, aluminum is being oxidized, so it's a reducing agent. Lead is being reduced, making it an oxidizing agent. Chlorine, on the other hand, is being reduced, so it's an oxidizing agent, while iodine is being, there's a little minus sign here, iodine is being, oh, I think I, is being oxidized, so that's a reducing agent. And then carbon minus 4 to plus 4 is losing electrons. So that's being oxidized and is a reducing agent, whereas oxygen is gaining electrons or being reduced. So it is the oxidizing agent. Okay, so in the first one here, copper is already an ion and it's the more reactive one. So no, no reaction is going to happen since silver is not going to be able to bump copper off. NaI and Br2, I'm sorry, B is Al is more reactive than iron since Al is the one looking to react. Yes, this will happen. On C, bromine is looking to react and it is the more reactive element. So yes, that will happen. But D, iodine is looking to react and it's the less reactive element. So no, D will not occur. So looking at each equation quickly, I've written in uh, which is the more reactive according to the equation. W is more reactive than X because it's able to ionize. X is more reactive than Z because Y, because Z isn't able to take from Y. Y must be more reactive than Z. And in the final one, I conclude, can conclude X is greater than Z. So W has got the greatest reactivity and then X, and then Y, and then Z, following from these four. So which of those equations will happen? Can Y take from W, or in reaction two, can Z take from W? And B, the answer is neither of those equations is going to happen, since W is the most reactive.